before we get started with today's critical thought, just a quick announcement for this video. I'm going to try and experiment with some ambient music in the background. And let me know what you think about in the comments down below. And I'll include a link to where it came from as well in the description. But with that said, for our topic today, we're going to go with one that was suggested on the Discord. We're going to be discussing kind of the evolution of loot and loot systems. And kind of the argument over gear rating and what it means and impacts on loot-based design in today's market. As I just said, today's topic is about that magic four-letter word that has driven people to repeat countless dungeons fighting the same enemies and bosses and opening up many, many loot boxes in order to get anywhere from major improvements to minuscule almost to like the 10th position on a decimal point in terms of power. But loot and loot based design has certainly come a long way from the days of the original Diablo to Path of Exile, Destiny, Warframe, Borderlands up there, a looter shooter as I like to call them these days, a schluter. And loot based design has certainly gotten a lot or it has grown a lot when it comes to trying to keep somebody motivated to play. Now, as always, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, loot-based systems revolve around the game either generating various pieces of gear or equipment, or just the acquisition of them. So it's not just about you becoming better at the game, but finding shinier swords, flashier pieces of armor, graphical effects, capes, hats, shirts, cloaks, whatever you want that will make your character stronger. Now, in loot-based systems, there's essentially two broad categories. You have games that have fixed gear, with maybe some slight variance to it. So, enemy drops a sword, and it could be the same sword every time, or let's say the sword could drop in a range of damage 47 to 50. That's it. Nothing more out of those few variances. The far greater, more popular example, of course, is us using a loot table or procedurally generated loot. This is when a loot piece is generated, it is generated using different variables with their own variants in them. And we've talked about this before on previous videos, where the loot table will essentially go from left to right in terms of picking how or what aspects is going to be part of this gear. What's the actual gear type? What's the rarity? You know, the actual values, any modifiers, what are the values of those modifiers, and so on and so forth. And that occurs within milliseconds during play. Now, what we are kind of focusing on today is the next step or evolution that we've seen over the last decade, and that is with the rise of the gear rating system. So, one of the challenges and kind of frustrations for new players when it comes to loot-based design is how do I know what's better? You know, this weapon does 5 points of fire damage, 8 points of ice, or do I want 8 points of fire damage and 5 points of ice? And the complexity and the synergies that go into gear and loot-based design has been an essential part of ARPGs and any game that wants to have long-term progression along these lines. Now, titles such as Grim Dawn, they kind of got very far, very low in the weeds in terms of all kinds of different elemental effects and status effects, and then the skills that can bounce or synergize off of them, and augments that can enhance the effects and the elements. And it, if you figure it out, it's very easy to break a game like Grim Dawn. Well, easy and relative speaking, you still need to get that loot. But if you don't figure it out, you're gonna be wondering why you can't kill anything. This was one of the reasons why Diablo streamlined things into basically just saying, every gear gives you a score of attack, defense, health. If it does something better in one of those categories, the number is green. If it's worse, it goes red. And you just wanna keep getting green items or getting green ratings, and you'll grow more in power. And the variables themselves don't necessarily matter as far as they do in a game like Grim Dawn or Path of Exile. 
Now, where things have changed and kind of this next step is with the idea of the gear rating. So instead of you having to worry about stats and variables and, you know, does it work with your gear or not, the game just simply gives every piece of gear a quantifiable rating based kind of on the overall stats. The higher the gear rating, the overall better that weapon is or that piece of gear. So if I'm using something that has a gear rating of 237 and I find an epic gear that is only 157, well, I want to know it's not that big of a jump. If I go from 257 to, let's say, 743, I'm going to expect a giant boost to where I'm at. And what these games will typically do in terms of trying to create some semblance of matching or scaling is that they'll set specific ratings or specific thresholds that are based on the average of your gear. So you may not be able to go to an area if your overall gear rating doesn't hit 1,700 points. Now, some titles are a little bit more strict, that instead of it being based on kind of overall gear, it's kind of based on whatever your lowest gear is. So I could have 5,000 gear rating on my gun, 1,000 gear rating on my shoes, and my gear rating will be considered 1,000. And if I can't get into a dungeon that requires, let's say, gear rating 3,000, I'm kind of in trouble here. And you can start to see some of the issues with both these kinds of systems. With the kind of more wider aspect of loot-based design, some of the older elements, the problem is that it becomes very hard for somebody to actually figure out, what is it that I'm doing? Is this gear any better? And as we've said before, when we talk about scale-based progression, there is an inherent limit on how much this impacts the player. Oh great, I go from doing 1.57 million points of damage to 1.5737 million damage. I'm really going to notice that additional difference, aren't I? Now, the advantage of a gear rating system is that for one thing, it can be scaled infinitely because there's always going to be numbers and we've seen this with titles such as The Division or I'm sorry, The Division 2 that had the kind of world tendency or world tier system. So you beat the world tier, you go up to the next one, everything scales up. You beat that one, you continue to scale up. So it removes a lot of the guesswork or challenges of loot generation where you just basically say, okay, at world tier 2, this is a loot table we use. At world tier 3, or world tier 3, we'll use this loot table. But the problem with this kind of system, and where these discussions get very tricky, is a gear rating system kind of removes all the magic of a loot based system. Because if I can't do anything because my gear rating is too low, it doesn't matter what my skill level is. And I've seen this with games like The Division and, uh, what was it, uh, DC Universe Online, where I'm trying to do something in this game, but because I haven't found, you know, one extremely powerful set of gloves or one amazing hat, my overall gear rating system, or my overall gear rating is too low. So I'm stuck in this position where I'm too high for the content that I have access to, but I'm too low to get access to the next level where I'll have a greater chance of getting that gear. And this is one of the issues that, again, keeps me from really enjoying gear rating systems. And where this discussion and the question for today's topic came from, if you do a gear rating system, do you still need a rarity system? Because rarity is the kind of quintessential aspect of a loot table. The higher the rarity, the higher everything scales on that gear. So a lower level but rarer piece of gear will ultimately be more valuable than a higher level but lower quality piece of gear. And this is by design because it's supposed to be impactful. That when that enemy drops that super ancient ultimate legendary item, 
everything should stop for me. And it should be a moment where I get something special. It shouldn't just be, you found the most powerful weapons, you know, sun, uh, sword gun <laughs> in the entire game. Improves damage by 50 points. Yeah, that really uh, is going to motivate me to keep playing. The problem with a gear rated system is that it really reduces the punchiness or the impact of these various pieces of gear. Because since you are entirely focused on that rating, you can't really appreciate or even really care about anything else on that weapon. Yes, this gauntlet lets me summon fireballs from the sky, but if it's not matching or comparable to the rest of my, my gear gear rating wise, it's utterly worthless for me. And it's a tough problem. And it's something that I'm curious to see what Diablo 4 and Path of Exile 2 are going to try and work around in terms of their design. But with that said, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to get back to answering this question and trying to figure out if you can combine both these systems in a way that works for everybody. And now for a quick thank you to our current Patreon supporters. And if you're interested in my books on design, they are available at most major retailers. 20th Central Games to Study is for first-time developers looking to be inspired. And the Game Design Deep Dive series covers the history and philosophy of major genres, with horror coming later in 2021. As we talked about in the last part, that loop-based design is trying to implement both rarity and a gear rating system. And the challenge is trying to figure out if there's a way to make them both work. Now the footage you're seeing right now is kind of from the end game of the Division 2, but I don't have too much footage of it, so in about a minute or so, it's going to cut back to some of the older just B-roll of it. But right now you can see the gear score on each piece of gear. And the issue with this system is that it is far too rigid. You see, the gear goes up in just very basic increments. So it's score 250, score 240. You're gonna see a lot of this repeat over and over again. And the problem is that there's just no real move or no real area for the player to try and do different things with it. Now, as you see with the higher quality gear, that's when the loot system or the gear rating gets a little bit more muddied. And what I would like to see with these two systems is that there needs to be a greater pool or a greater focus on player skill. Because a lot of developers with their gear rating make it so rigid that it doesn't matter player skill if your gear rating is a certain point too low below an enemy you are literally unable to kill them. It kind of gets into the old MMO adage, where, you know, if an enemy is five levels above you, they are instantly inaccessible and undefeatable. But the second you get that one level, lo and behold, you are now able to do everything and fight them. We saw this with God of War 2018 as well. So, with trying to do things both ways, I do think a rarity system still needs to be in place, or a loot quality system, along with the gear rating. Because you need a way for the player to feel excitement. And this is a major role of loot based design. It's that same allure that we see in gotcha based designs and loot box driven games. That when that item drops, that is, you know, epic or legendary, and there's sparks flying out and all that. It gets, some, it gets the person excited and makes them want to open it and want to do more in it. If all the gear just drops and it's the same color, it becomes harder for the player to know, okay, wow, I got 27 gray guns, all gear rating 150. Okay, what do I do with all this? But as we've said, you need to be able to give the player a reason to keep going after this and either system or I'm sorry both systems inherently have limits as we've said numbers 
only work when the player can notice a difference. If an enemy has 100 points of health and I go from doing 10 points of damage to 75, that's a big deal. If an enemy has 1.75 million points of damage and I go from doing 200,000 to 250,000, I'm not really seeing that. Now, what they do with the division with like their system is that the higher quality or higher rarities come with special modifiers, which are, I don't know if they are rated or factored into the gear rating or not. But again, it runs into that same issue. I can get a weapon that has all the modifiers that I want, but if it's gear rating 5 and I need to get to gear rating 10, well, guess what? That amazing piece of gear that works perfectly for me is now utterly useless. So, here's my question for those of you watching. What do you think the solution is? Is there a way to combine them both? Like I said, I think for me, I want there to be less of a role of the overall gear rating. I think it's great to have it as a simple designation, but the entire game should not be so rigidly locked. Maybe opening up, saying, okay, you must have a gear rating of between, I don't know, 500 and 1500 to do something, as opposed to just saying, it must be no less than this number and only this number. And you should be able to kind of, you know, punch higher, punch higher than your weight limit. Because if you're not able to do that, then the game is entirely driven by the loot and the gear rating, and not by the player's role. And we've seen games unfortunately fall into this point where I can be the worst shot in the world, but if I'm using the best weapon, I am almost unbeatable in PvP. While somebody using the weakest gun but being really great is still going to get screwed because they don't have the abstraction on their side. And yes, we have really haven't talked too much about multiplayer, because that is an entirely different Pandora's box to open. So, one final question for those of you watching. What did, for those of you who played Borderlands 3, what did you think of its loot system? Because the Borderlands series has always had a very annoying kind of loot design. Where they throw so much on these weapons that it becomes very hard to get guns that work for your build, let alone be able to find upgrades and still keep the build that you want. And you know, good luck if you can't find a gun of the right resistance or the right elemental type to deal with the enemies of that specific resistance. Because I ran into so many problems doing New Game Plus in Borderlands 2 because of it. With all that said, thank you so much for watching. Again, let me know what you think in the comments below, especially about the ambient music playing. And check out our Discord and Patreon. Come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where we're on science of games. Until next time, take care.